All right, I'm going to think we're going to get started up here. So I'm going to go up here to the ZBrush tab, but unfortunately, we've only got the cup and the cream. So what's going on here? If I go back into ZBrush, you're going to notice that these two are named the exact same thing. Usually, ZBrush is pretty good when you're duplicating things off. That it doesn't do that, occasionally it won't. One easy fix for that is to go to Z Plugin Subtool Master, go to Do Visible, and choose Correct Duplicate Tool Name. Uh, duplicate subtool names and hit OK and that'll go through and change any duplicates to something else. Now when I hit BPR and we head back into Keyshop, now you're going to see we have one, two, and three objects here like we're supposed to. So let's do a little bit of quick glass and liquid rendering here. So we're going to go over here to glass and there's a bunch of different options in here. We can do glass solid white and that's going to give us a nice thick solid looking glass here. Um, however, you'll notice that I think if I'm correct, if we double click on that material properties here and we go to labels. Oh, we can't do labels on solid. That's good. Um, just in case you can sometimes if you for some reason have to go back to glass basic, for example, um, you can go in here and turn on refractive and you'll get a lot of the same look out of that. So just in case. Uh, but I'll go ahead and throw a glass solid back on here. And now we have solid looking glass. Now if we go over here to our lighting, you're going to see we're in basic uh, lighting mode here. Uh, if we go all the way down here to jewelry, you're going to see that turns on global illumination and caustics and ground illumination, all these things which is going to make glass render correctly, especially when you get the liquids, uh, get all that stuff to kind of render together so it looks more realistic. So something to keep in mind. Um, for this top foam part here, we're going to go ahead and go to our scene. We're going to turn that eyeball off. Oops on this one here. And we're just going to deal with these two liquids here. Uh, to start with, let's go to our liquids here. And we'll start with liquid Chardonnay. We'll just drop that right into that glass. And you're going to see at first it's going to be very, very dark. If we double click that, I think if we're going to play our transparency distance, if, as we increase that, if we take that to like three, you're going to see that gets more and more transparent. Um, let's change it to like two. So you can kind of dial in this number to get the look you're going for. One maybe. Yeah, one, one, one should be fine. Uh, so we've got Chardonnay in there, and we've got glass, and we've got light passing through this object and going to the other side. Now, if we were doing this correctly and we were separating off these uh, side surfaces that are touching the glass from the top, what you would notice is the refractive index you would have to change from either air, which is one, I believe, and then glass. If you double click this glass, you see the refractive index is 1.5. So basically what you would do is you split this top surface off from the side surface that's touching the glass. The top surface, you would dial in the refractive index to 1 to 1.3, and then the surfaces that are touching the glass over here, you would dial that in as 1.5 to match the glass refractive index. But in lieu of doing that, I went ahead and just shrank it in a little bit and called it a day. Now, if you wanted to, what would be kind of cool is you could do, and again, go to my YouTube channel, you can see more info on this, but for example, you could take nano mesh and scatter bubbles all inside of the volume in here. And just to kind of illustrate that, I guess we can go through here really quickly. We'll go add geometry, and we'll just throw a sphere into our scene. We'll take the sphere and move it up. And just for the heck of it, we'll scale it down just a little bit. We'll turn on scale here, and we'll give them a little friend. We're going to go to scene. I click the sphere and we will duplicate this. Put a couple bubbles in here, like so. And we'll scale this one down a little bit more. All right, so we got two bubbles in here. Now, if we go to the materials here, you're going to see we have two materials to this. If I drag this material onto that one, that'll make sure that both of these spheres have the same material assigned to them. So I'm going to double click that material. First, we're going to make it white. We don't need blue bubbles in there. And now we need to make them transparent. So let's go ahead and change this to, say, glass and we'll change that refractive index to one and that'll kind of give it a nice bubbly look going on in there now of course this is just two bubbles it kind of looks like very flat liquid uh, but you know like I said use nano mesh and ZBrush to really populate and clump uh, bubbles around the surface of your object it goes a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm trying to accomplish here but I think you get the idea uh, so if you want to change this liquid here we can go in here we can drop some beer in here and again, we'll change this refractive, or the, I'm sorry, the transparency distance to like three. It's a nice golden ale. Uh, or we can put in some coffee. We'll probably stick with coffee here. So we're going to go into coffee here, change that ref uh, transparency distance to one, and get a nice dark brown coffee. Doesn't generally have a whole lot of huge bubbles in it, but we'll go ahead and leave those in there just now, just to just because we made them. Now, if we don't stick with coffee, if we want to go and do a translucent material, like say this milk here, we can drop, drop that translucent. You're probably not going to see the bubbles very well. Uh, as well as you're probably, if we double click this translucent milk, we can go through here. We can change the translucency if we drop it down quite a bit. If you hover over this, it'll tell you what it's going to do. Higher values show more subsurface scattering, create a softer appearance, uh, appearance, etc. So if we drag this up, it'll give us a little bit of a softer look of milk. 
But again, as we allow this to res in and we're using, oh, let's change this back to 100% of our CPU there, you'll see that to begin to take shape. But we'll go ahead and drop liquid coffee back in there here. And then again, we'll change that transparency distance back to one.